Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday gatherings on the cerebellum. Today, um, we, we're going to hear about this new technology, chemogenetics, which uh, um, uh, has really been brought forward to being used in primates by Takafumi Minamimoto, who is our guest today. Um, chemogenetics is, relies on um, uh, altering a particular acetylcholine receptor and uh, then injecting that altered receptor so that it becomes uh, um, uh, activated by a drug that otherwise would not exist in the brain. So this would allow the investigator to affect a particular neuron type using an uh, exogenous um, event that could potentially be administered to the animal via food. So it's really a revolutionary way to control activity of neurons in the brain. Um, today, Takafumi is going to describe this for us. And uh, just as a brief background, Takafumi received his PhD from Osaka University, did, did a PhD, then did a postdoc at NIH with Barry Richmond. Takafumi, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, seminar. So the yeah, I'm not the uh, cerebellum person, but uh, I'm happy to hear and share you uh, my experience about the uh, dread technologies uh, applying the uh, non-human primate. I have been working on this uh, uh, chemogenetics uh, dread for all this. Uh, let's say 15 years uh, from 2009, and they were uh, the first uh, dread uh, uh, paper uh, 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 out. So oh, recently, uh, we finally uh, feel confident this technology uh, properly working in non-human plummet, and I'm hoping you uh, convey our idea uh, how we uh, can change the uh, the using this uh, chemogenetic tool uh, for uh, non-human primate uh, neuroscience study. So let me begin with the uh, the brief introduction of how uh, what is the uh, chemogenetics and what is uh, dread. So uh, dread is the one type of the chemogenetic manipulation. Two, design of receptor exclusively activated by design of drugs. So the, uh, for example, inhibitory design of receptor uh, HM4DI, that is the uh, in, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, having the two uh, uh, point mutation of the uh, human muscarinic receptor type four. And this manipulation changed the uh, receptor property completely. So this receptor uh, no more uh, no longer uh, activated by endogenous ligand, including acetylcholine, but is selectively activated by the designer ligand, uh, like uh, CNO, close up in an oxide, uh, or uh, DCZ, desclo close up in. And the uh, the activation of the uh, this receptor uh, induces the suppressing the activity of host neuron. And this ligand, uh, on the other hand, is biologically inert. That means uh, this does not affect any endogenous system. So those are the kind of key and keyhole uh, molecule. Like once you introduce this uh, keyhole. Uh, receptor molecule into the specific uh, neuronal population into the uh, the specific neuron population in monkey, for example. This doesn't affect it at all, but every time you inject a uh, key molecule uh, activator uh, like DCZ, uh, the intramuscular or peripherally, this get into the brain and activate the receptor and the uh, like the and then induce this silencing the activity of dread expressing neuron for hours. So you can induce uh, the in non invasively uh, manipulate specific neuron population uh, in non human primate plane. So this uh, dread has an advantage in non human primate use, unlike the optogenetics where the uh, light 
split limitation in large plane, the thread doesn't have any spatial limitations. So this is why we uh, uh, you start using uh, this technology for non-human primates. Uh, this is first applying in, uh, in the central nervous system 2009. And then uh, we have been trying to apply uh, this uh, dread in non-human climate. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, this first application of dread in non-human climate, and then the the other uh, four issues, uh, uh, four topics in non-human climate chemogenetics, like uh, the application or uh, the development of new agonists, and also pathway specific silencing and the combining with functional MRI and also the uh, potential future uh, human treatment application. Okay, for the this kind of genetic technology, we uh, the for gene delivery, uh, we have to rely on the virus vector injection. The virus, uh, like AV, it's kind of uh, liquid. Uh, actually, inject into the brain tissue. It's split in the brain, and the virus particle infect uh, the neuron or cells and start producing the target functional proteins. And this uh, method, we have several uh, important parameter like injection method, uh, volume and speed, and also virus vectors, cell types, uh, promoter or titers, a lot of parameters we have to optimize for non-human primate. Our uh, combination can uh, uh, affect uh, the, uh, the uh, dread, uh, the, the expression level of dread. And then, then we start manipulating the uh, neuronal activity uh, with uh, the, uh, the agonist injection. While uh, during the, uh, the experiment ongoing, we don't know usually about the uh, how the dread expression, like level or location or stability. And we finally obtained those results after experiment down by the in vitro examination. So oh, for those kind of the optimization, we have to take the, I mean, lots of time and lots of cost for optimization. So to avoid this uh, long time of or long time optimization, we take a different approach. Uh, using the uh, the imaging guide chemogenetics. For this purpose, we use uh, PET visualization technology. Uh, we try to visualize the uh, dread receptor in vivo. It's a kind of straightforward use of PET uh, technology using the uh, the uh, the radio level uh, chemical injection and this gain into the brain and bind to the uh, receptor and we can visualize the uh, the uh, dread receptor by the uh, this radiological signal uh, through the uh, PET camera. Actually, this is the first uh, image obtained the uh, the uh, using carbon eleven labeled close-up in as a PET ligand. So initially we use a uh, close up in for the uh, uh, as a uh, the pet ligand because close up in has a strong affinity against uh, dread receptor, and uh, you can see here uh, this nice hot uh, strong uh, uh, the uh, uh, tracer accumulation observed specifically a location where we inject virus vector expressing HM4DI into the, uh, the ptamium. So like this method, we visualize the dread uh, expression in vivo and uh, allow us to manipulate uh, chemogenetics method. So first uh, study uh, we uh, done with the uh, the inhibitory designer receptor expressing in bilateral uh, stratum uh, named rostromedial caudate. 
And then every time we give the CNO, we obtain a nice behavior change. I'm not going to detail about this, but uh, uh, we found uh, these uh, lesion are related to the reward size sensitivity uh, because of the every time silencing this uh, area, monkey shows the deficit. And also in collaboration of Barry Richmond Lab, Eldridge uh, et al. showed that the silencing the orbitofrontal cortex combining with the uh, unilateral uh, renal uh, cortex lesion, showing that the monkey uh, showed a similar kind of reward uh, sen uh, the sensitivity. In these days, also all the other lab also show that the uh, the application of thread technology and in, in combining with the functional MRI and also behavior in uh, the thread expression in DLPFC. So those are the all initial uh, thread uh, successful or dread application in non-human primate starting from 2016. But in this period, we uh, used uh, CNO, or that is the original dread actuator, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, the activating dread receptor. But the uh, CNO has a critical drawbacks. First of all, CNO has a low brain permeability, so oh, the uh, the uh, the chemogenetic action was very slow. We have to wait uh, about an hour after a uh, CNO injection to start behavioral experiment. Moreover, uh, the uh, one paper uh, published showing that the, the after uh, injection of CNO or into the mice, uh, the some of some part of the CNO or back metabolite to the close-up in that is the psychostimulant. Uh, which acts on the endogenous receptors. So people start worry about the potential side effect by the CNO alone. And also for non-human primate, we, we, uh, primate use, we have to inject large volume of CNO and cost uh, very uh, much, very expensive for uh, each time of the injection. So those issues are, uh, make us decide to produce a new uh, dread selective agonist. So, uh, and then we start to develop no, novel dread agonist. And initially, we tried to develop novel or dread pet ligand, because as I showed you, uh, fast dread uh, agonist, uh, dread pet uh, ligand close up in uh, nicely visualized dread expression, but also bind to the other uh, brain uh, area because close up in has a high affinity against the uh, endogenous receptor like dopamine and serotonin and so on. So we try to uh, minimize this kind of off target binding of the pet ligand. So when I read many papers and the old literature about the close up and I found uh, one chemical named Desclor close up showing the nice uh, property, which is lower affinity against dopamine and serotonin receptor compared with the close up -in. So I got the idea about the uh, DCZ may be a good pet ligand. So uh, we tested the uh, carbon airborne label, the DCZ, and the inject to the monkey and obtain this kind of pet imaging. Now uh, you can see here uh, nice uh, the uh, uh, tracer accumulation specifically and the dread expression area and the ptamen. And the other side of ptamen, there is no signal at all. So this kind of high selectivity uh, we obtain and from the using the uh, DCZ. And then I have contact to the uh, Brian Ross 
and ask him to uh, do the in vitro binding assay. And they, uh, they uh, showing that also consistent uh, the uh, high selectivity uh, of DCZ against dread. So all the the now the y axis is showing the strengths of the binding affinity. So all the DCZ showing that the high uh, affinity against the, uh, both excitatory and the inhibitory dread and also the binding affinity against any endogenous receptor is very low. At least eight uh, times fold or higher selective. And the clozapine, on the other hand, although the, this has the strong affinity to the dread, but also similar a high affinity against the endogenous receptor. So these are consistent with PET result. So DCZ has a high selectivity for dread. We also show that the DCZ is a, a potent dread agonist in vivo. Uh, first, we uh, tried this is in, in mice uh, expressing HM3DQ excitatory dread in the body cortex uh, with the uh, GCAMP6 calcium indicator. After DCZ infusion, uh, the, we obtained a nice uh, jump up to, uh, neuronal activity immediately after DCZ injection. And this activity is much higher compared to CNO or other agonists. Similar uh, rapid enhanced neuronal activity was found uh, in the monkey uh, expressing HM3DQ in the unilateral amygdala. Now, when we stick electrode into the uh, the amygdala uh, neuron expressing HM3DQ uh, uh, region, uh, we obtain the nice enhanced, quickly enhanced LHP power following the DCZ administration within minutes. Although in this case, we use a very low dose of DCZ, we obtain a nice enhanced neural activity. And similar act, uh, quick uh, and selective activation were observed using the uh, uh, FDG PET uh, metabolic change, specifically observed the dread expression area of the, uh, the, the uh, amygdala in a dose dependent manner. So uh, correctly, these results suggest that DCZ selectively and rapidly enhance the neural activity via excitatory dread. We also uh, demonstrate that the DCZ reversibly manipulates cognitive function via inhibitory dread agent for the eye. Uh, for this purpose, we have two macaque monkey expressing HM4DI bilateral DLPFC. We inject via vector in multiple uh, injection, and we obtain a nice dread expression covering the, uh, the dorsal and ventral bank of principal sulcus. And actually, this is also visualized by a uh, DCZ PET. And we tested those monkeys with the special delayed response task. It's a probe test of the working memory function, which rely on the uh, uh, DLPFC function. Uh, in this paradigm, monkey will require uh, to uh, the remember food well location is a left or right for or up to 10 seconds. Monkey's ability of the working memory is completely impaired uh, following the DCZ administration. And in this case, uh, as shown in, in red bar, uh, monkey's, uh, the uh, correct race is a more, uh, a more or less chance level following DCZ injection. But 24 hours after DCZ, uh, the performance completely recovered. So all these uh, demonstrate that the uh, DCZ 
and HM4DI reversibly and selectively suppresses the activity of large bilateral brain region in monkeys, uh, like in this case, DLPFC. And importantly, a same dose of DCZ, a 0.1 milligram per kilogram uh, dose, has no impact on brain activity or behavior in control monkey, which does not express dread. We, in our lab, have tested a monkey with many paradigms, including cognitive and motivation behavior. We didn't see any uh, behavioral change at all in control monkeys. And also other lab or, or confirm this. And also of, in terms of brain activity and recent state functional connectivity uh, did not change following the DCZ administration demonstrated by the Fujimoto et al. and other lab. Then so far, uh, 0 0.1 milligram per kilo or less dose uh, seems to be safe uh, dose range in, in, in macaque monkey or probably marmosets. But be cautious uh, uh, and, and, and probably uh, for or even in future study in each experiment, we have to have the uh, in control experiment in each uh, own I mean, uh, experimental condition in non dread uh, animals uh, for the for I mean the uh, control is very important for the chemogenetic technology. And now uh, DCZ is the first choice of the dread agonist in non-human primate, uh, which has a potent and selective and metabolically stable and fast acting and, and property. And, and DCZ is now commercially available and you can purchase from the uh, multiple vendor. And DCZ uh, has been already used in many neuroscience studies, including monkeys and rats and mice and so on. We also all use uh, DCZ uh, by oral uh, administration as a route. Uh, Kei Oyama performed oral administration for, for his uh, experiment he gave a uh, uh, food containing DCZ uh, about three times higher dose compared to IM injection uh, two hours uh, before our experiment start he give uh, uh, the food uh, one of the experiment uh, he used uh, uh, macaque monkey expressing hm 4 di uh, bilateral DLPFC and test uh, the monkey with working memory task again. But in this case, he give the uh, DCZ containing food uh, every day, uh, uh, conti uh, continuously 16 days. And during this period, monkey continuously and, uh, uh, and consistently showed the uh, working memory uh, impairment. And importantly, uh, the next day, following the last dose, the monkey's uh, performance completely uh, recovered to the uh, normal level. So this suggests that the uh, the uh, at least in the two weeks, uh, the DCZ and the HM4DI doesn't show any short-term desensitization, and also or we can manipulate chronic uh in silencing at least in this preparation we also all test with all of dcg administration in um, marmosets and marmosets now have the uh dread expression in unilateral dopaminergic cell and substantia nigra compact and after uh, uh, we give the uh, DCZ containing food, actually pancake, small pancake, and the uh, marmoset eat and they start uh, uh, showing the rotation and the uh, contralateral uh, to the uh, the dread activation side. 
this is the uh, similar result as a rodent uh, experiment. But these two studies uh, nicely demonstrate that now we can manipulate the specific neural population in non-human primate without any special device, without uh, any uh, restriction or any a painful condition. So just the uh, non-invasive, also the chronic condition. So oh, now, oh, even in the uh, like uh, group cage condition, we can manipulate this uh, specific neural population in specific individual. Uh, we can uh, manipulate uh, like this condition. So, and this, I believe this can uh, be widening our opportunity of the uh, non-human primate use in future uh, behavioral study. Okay, uh, so far uh, I introduced the, uh, the threat manipulation uh, in specific neuronal uh, circuit uh, population, but uh, uh, you may want to try to manipulate specific neural circuit or projection. And this can be done using the, uh, the dual virus vector method. Like uh, in this case, Oguchi et al. Uh, try to manipulate the circuit uh, neuron project from the LPFC uh, to code it. So he give uh, two kind of virus vector injection to lateral prefrontal cortex and uh, coded nucleus, and then identify the neuron project from LPFC to uh, coded nucleus. And he showed that the, uh, the behavioral change and the neuron activity change every time following the uh, CNO administration. But for this method, uh, you need to know the, uh, the precise anatomical uh, information, uh, to, like point to point uh, of the anatomical connection. And also another limitation of this method of the, even in the, uh, the you can identify the pathway specific target neuron like uh, double virus vector uh, way, but if this neuron have the bifurcation, like a project to the other location, you may uh, change the activity also the uh, projecting from this area to the other, uh, which uh, you uh, may want to uh, try to uh, change the activity from, uh, I mean, the, this method. So this is a kind of limitation of this uh, two virus vector uh, technology. So the other type of the pathway specific manipulation can be done in the using chemogenetics, uh, which using the, uh, the local agonist infusion. So all the inhibitory design of the receptor agent for the uh, is expressed not only a cell body, but also axon terminal. For example, in this case, a terminal neuron, uh, the expressing agent for the eye, uh, also express agent for the eye at the axon terminal, in this case, uh, substantia nigula uh, reticulata. And the, our PET imaging uh, can visualize those uh, cellular and the axon terminal expression. And importantly, if we inject uh, agonist DCZ uh, at the axon terminal or uh, causing the inhibition of synaptic vesicle release. So in this way, we can uh, terminate or, or the one pathway, like pathway specific silencing while the, the activity of host neuron or the neural transmission to the other uh, area uh, stays normal. And uh, our PET technology provide in vivo neuronal anatomical projection mapping that can be selectively manipulated. So to demonstrate this technology, K. Oyama performed the, uh, using two macaque monkey agent for the 
uh, expressing agent for the I uh, in the DLPFC again. And he took uh, PET imaging and showing that the uh, now a nice axon uh, terminal expression bilateral uh, DLPFC, uh, sorry, dorsal chordate. And also the uh, axon terminal expression pressure was obtained in the lateral part of medial dorsal sinus. So like this, uh, now our PET imaging and uh, showing that the two uh, uh, cortical subcortical projection, DLPFC2 caudate, DLPFC2 uh, medial dorsal or sinus uh, as a candidate for the target for the reversible disconnection. And actually, this is uh, confirmed by the uh, immunohistochemistry. So, the uh, for, for for functional study, uh, uh, we first test monkey with the spatial working memory. Again, as you remember, if we inject the DCZ uh, in body, uh, and we obtain the nice uh, behavioral deficit, uh, working memory deficit in this condition. But similar deficit also observed following the DCZ infusion, specifically when we inject the bilateral uh, medial dorsal sinus, but not observed in the following the uh, infusion into the caudate nucleus. So this suggests the uh, DLPFC MD lateral uh, pathway uh, silencing impaired working memory performance. And conversely, when we test monkey with the free choice paradigm, in this case, monkey freely pick up a food either left or right food well. In this case, monkey's uh, choice rate is about chance, uh, about 50-50% from left or right. But uh, the monkey starts showing the uh, biasing uh, toward the ipsilateral uh, uh, side after the uh, DCZ infuse into the unilateral uh, dorsal caudate. So uh, monkey uh, is now avoid to cho choosing the contralateral uh, location and select the ipsilateral side. So this kind of the uh, decision making impairment were uh, not observed in following the uh, DLPFC2 medial dorsal pathway silencing. So now uh, our pet guided pathway selective silencing revealed dissociable role of the uh, prefrontal subcortical pathway in cognitive functions. Uh, special working memory is the uh, uh, the the uh, rely on the DLPFC to medial dorsal pathway, and the decision making is 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 uh, related to the uh, DLPFC to coded pathway. So our PET guided pathway specific silencing and in allowing for dissecting multiple neural circuit in very flexible way. So. The, in this uh, experiment, we use uh, the two monkeys, and each monkey we tested uh, the uh, six combination of pathway silencing, like bilateral uh, DLPFC to MD or coded, and the left side or right side on the both uh, pathways. So using the a, a single subject, we can manipulate in many uh, neural circuits. That's the advantage of, of this method. Okay, uh, um, let me move on to the next issue. Uh, uh, the topic like the now uh, combining with functional MRI study uh, with uh, dread technology. So oh, oh, Toshi Hirabayashi now uh, 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 taking the functional MRI during the, he stimulate the uh, index finger of macaque monkey to identify the uh, small sensory S1 lesion functionally. So as you can see here, nice uh, bold response observed in the uh, about the uh, central sulcus, the kind of 
the uh, the functionally defined small sensory uh, cortex digit uh, finger uh, region. And then we uh, targeted this area, uh, we inject a B a vector expressing HM4D uh, in those region. And they actually dread were nicely covered uh, the, uh, this, uh, this hot uh, uh, board response region um, uh, demonstrated by PET imaging. So now uh, we can manipulate or silencing the the this uh the functionally defined uh digit finger lesion so to test this uh functional uh, effect of the finger digit area silencing uh, we test monkey with the uh the fine finger movement like pick up a food from the uh small uh pellet uh, and monkey is showing the uh, severe, uh, uh, this fine finger movement uh, every time we give a uh, uh, DCZ injection. And, and specifically when monkey uh, use the contralateral uh, 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 actually ipsilateral finger of stimulation, stimulated finger. And the, uh, also, we obtained the uh, result of uh, the uh, similar uh, DCZ administration attenuated the sensory evoked signal at the uh, small sensory uh, digit region locally. Like uh, the uh, after DCZ injection, uh, the this bold response were uh, disappeared following the uh, the, uh, the during the uh index finger stimulation but not only this uh, local impact we also obtained a remote impact that is the downstream structure including area five area seven and small sensory uh, secondary small sensory area where we initially uh, uh, obtained a nice uh, stimulate uh, sensory evoked signal were found but uh, following the dcz this activation were disappeared. So this network change, uh, which involved in the uh, pseudo or reach, uh, 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 reach movement uh, related area uh, may be uh, causing the, uh, the, this uh, finger movement deficit. So, uh, the, we also obtained the other uh, interesting finding that it uh, following the uh, during the foot soul stimulation we uh, obtained nice uh, bold response at the uh, somat sensory area foot lesion, but uh, the uh, when we stimulate uh, following the DCZ administration, this uh, bold response uh, significantly in increased. This is probably due to the disinhibition of the uh, small sensory uh, digit region. And this, uh, the, uh, the uh, increase of the representation also caused the hypersensation at the uh, foot sold, uh, 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 specifically a contralateral foot. Uh, in this case, uh, we test monkey with a cold plate and uh, how long uh, uh, to, to uh, monkey avoid or monkey uh, 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 change the foot uh, position. And, and the, uh, in this case, when we test uh, DCZ administration, uh, the monkey starts showing the hypersensation specifically uh, in the uh, contralateral uh, foot. So these are uh, uh, demonstration of chemogenetic functional MRI reveal behaviorally uh, relevant by directional network modulation. Okay, finally, I'd like sh uh, uh, showing the uh, recent uh, our demonstration of the chemogenetic seizure control as a potential clinical application of dread. 
uh, for the, uh, the potential clinical application, we are uh, focusing on the frontal lobe epilepsy uh, because the, uh, the uh, patient having the drug resistant focal epilepsy uh, sometimes had a surgical resection of the uh, pathogenetic area. But if the pathogenetic area uh, had the, uh, on the uh, frontal lobe, like uh, related to the uh, the language or executive function, uh, it's difficult to take the take out those brain tissue. So the uh, resection of free uh, frontal lobe epilepsy is carried out uh, conservatively. So resulting in the higher unsatisfactory outcome rate. To overcome this, uh, we try to use chemogenetic silencing technology, try to suppress the, uh, uh, the epilepsy seizure on demand. So every time uh, seizure occur, we give the uh, DCG shot to terminate the, uh, the epilepsy. So actually, uh, this was uh, demonstrated uh, frequently or repeatedly in rodent studies. Uh, I mean, the dread seizure control. But so far, uh, no paper was published uh, in, in, in non-human primate demonstration. So oh, for oh, our, our proof of concept study, we use macaque monkey as a, a model and in, in the uh, motor cortex as a pseudo seizure focus. So oh, we inject the virus vector expressing HM4 di in the unilateral motor cortex. Uh, that is the hand uh, anatomically defined hand area. And the expression of HM4 di was visualized by uh, PET imaging like this and also confirmed by the immunohistochemistry after the experiment done. And then we uh, performed the second surgery, and now we put uh, EcoG electrode covering the, this uh, dread expressing lesion. And then we uh, try to uh, induce the uh, uh, acute seizure by bicuclin, that is the uh, GABA, GABA A receptor antagonist. So all oh, this is uh, EG trace recorded from the big bicuclin injection uh, area, and then these are uh, a color map of the EcoG electrode. And following the bicuclear injection, we uh, obtained this kind of the uh, spikes, seizure spikes happening the injection uh, location. And then this amplitude and also frequency uh, goes up. And also the uh, area of the uh, seizure amplitude split uh, entire uh, covering the bilateral hemisphere. At the time, monkey start showing the uh, bodily seizure, like shaking the body or hand or, or foot. After confirming this uh, seizure uh, by electrophysiologically and behavior, we give a shot of DCZ intramuscularly. And this treatment uh, uh, quickly attenuate the uh, cortical seizure and also bodily seizure. Uh, very rapidly within minutes. In this experiment, we have two macaque monkey expressing HM4DI in the uh, unilateral uh, motor cortex and it tested the uh, six uh, time treatment. And these are summary plot of the how DCZ attenuate cortical seizure amplitude and the body, body recompositions. As you can see here, uh, after DCZA administration and in seizure amplitude uh, quickly dropped significantly and also body convulsion uh, also all dropped uh, within the one, two, three minutes following the DCZ administration. 
So uh, from this, uh, those are nice demonstration of chemogenetic attenuation cortical seizure in monkeys and fast application of uh, this kind of uh, uh, dread techni uh, technology in the potential clinical application. And, and probably uh, chemogenetic is a promising therapeutic option for uh, uh, FFC and probably for other brain diseases. Okay, let me wrap up uh, my talk. Uh, chemogenetics has an increased reliability and can be applicable for circuit manipulation, non-human primate. This is a pet offers in vivo mapping of anatomical projection that can be selectively manipulated. Imaging guided chemogenetics reveal dissociable functions of the uh, prefrontal or to subcortical pathways. Chemogenetic functional MRI allows us to identify network operation and can uh, causally related to behavior. And the uh, dread DCZ can be a promising therapeutic option for uh, epilepsy and hope-free other uh, brain diseases. I'd like to thank all my uh, contribution of my uh, the uh, researcher in my laboratory, Keiji Nagai, uh, Yuji Nagai performed the uh, PET experiment. K. Oyama performed the pathway specific silencing. Toshi Hirabayashi performed functional MRI study and also former uh, researcher uh, Nao Miyakawa uh, performed the uh, seizure control experiment. And also I'd like to thank the uh, people in outside lab and especially uh, Ken and Masa uh, produced a uh, uh, great uh, V-vector for us. And the people in the NIMH Barry Richmond lab uh, for the uh, long-term collaboration from the, uh, the, this uh, chemogenetic uh the the application in non-human primates and also i'd like to thank people in the north carolina and brian Ross lab and the uh, mount sinai janjin lab for the uh the uh production of the dcz and verification of dcz uh, studies and okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention and happy to your uh, comment and question. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, it, for um, as a as a background for us, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about any concerns that you have with this easy or with dreads and any difficulties that you have faced in using this technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, difficulty. Mm, okay. Maybe without PET imaging, uh, the uh, the virus vector injection or the uh, optimization of the uh, dread expression is one of the first uh, part of the difficulty. Because the uh, uh, without experience, you don't know how how you inject virus vector or how much volume and how much spread in in each cases. But after accumulating these uh, experience, you not necessarily need the uh, the pet anymore. But uh, at very beginning, you need to verify this uh, expression using the tedious uh, immunohistochemistry in every time. So that's first time, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, difficulty non-human primate use. And the, especially the uh, silencing dread is a little bit hard. I mean, the uh, if you want to uh, shut down the neuronal activity completely, you need to express HN4DI in very high level of expression. That's sure. But uh, uh, if you want to manipulate uh, and, and or part of it, uh, neuronal activity, 
uh, you may want to use the excite tree trade. That one may be the uh, more uh, or relatively easier because you don't necessarily need the, uh, the such a high expression level. And actually, the uh, for every time we use the uh, uh, excited tree dread, we use uh, DCZ dose is very uh, minimal. And if we use the high dose, uh, we uh, we we may have uh, over activate the neuron and sometimes cause the uh, cell loss or uh, excited toxicity. So that's the other, uh, I mean, the uh, the potential uh, difficulty when you use the excitatory dread. Thank you so much. Are there, are there any questions for Takafumi? Nagafumi, what is what are your plans uh, for the future? For future, yeah, uh, I'm, 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 I'm also, yeah, uh, our group we now conducting uh, several different uh, studies. One direction is uh, we try to increase the specificity like the taking advantage of this uh, genetic uh, approach, like the, the uh, cell, cell type of specific uh, manipulation, like dopaminergic and serotonergic, and this kind of the uh, specific manipulation we are uh, working on. And the other thing is the, uh, we taking advantage of the visualization of pathway uh, we are uh, now applying this uh, the cortical sub cortical manipulation. Now uh, we are summarizing the new uh, result uh, the obtained orbitofrontal cortex to the subcortical uh, pathway. Actually, uh, we obtained a nice double dissociation from OSC to uh, salamic and the uh, striatal pathways. And the other is also combining functional MRI. Now we try to manipulate the, uh, the, the more broad range of the uh, circuit, like the functional connectivity or the, uh, yeah, uh, those kind of wide uh, brain network and try to combining or the uh, applying this knowledge to understand the human uh, neuropsychiatric diseases or so. Well, that sounds very exciting. I am so grateful for the time you took to teach us about this fabulous new technology and, and I wish you the best and I hope to meet you in person someday. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Thank you very much.